go up ahead a thousand stories of what they think you'll like but I've had the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good, you're a good father Good, good father. I will stand here in the fire. I will stand here in this place. I will lift my hands and worship to your name. I will sing and not be silent. I will offer up my praise. I will sing and my fortress shall. 
Majestic is your name, clothed in glory, splendor and majesty. Oh, we bow and worship you, we bow and glorify you, we bow and exalt you, for you only reign. We bow and exalt you. We bow and lift you high. We bow and exalt you, God. For you reign. My God, you reign. My God, you reign. Lord on my name, one more time. 
I'd like to share uh, briefly with you, and then we will go into communion after that. You can just give me a little bit more level on my microphone. Would you please turn so long to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5 to 13. Uh, it won't be displayed on the screen. We are encouraging you more and more, bring your Bible to church. Is that okay? I think bringing your Bible to church kind of makes sense. <laughs> All right. So we'll get to that in a moment. If I, was to, if I was to give a title to what I'm sharing with you in these brief moments, it would be the following, Moments Alone with the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Moments Alone with the Lord. You know that we have been focusing on prayer, and this passage we're about to read does relate specifically to prayer and Jesus' teaching. And in terms of that, Years ago, I heard a very simple definition of what is prayer, and this is it. Prayer is communicating with God. That's quite simple. That's what it is. Prayer is communicating with God. You talking to the Lord, praying to the Lord, the Lord also speaking to you. It's not a one-way street. And so prayer is not that complicated. I do believe that Jesus certainly didn't want prayer to be out of reach of anyone. He wanted all of his children to be able to practice this thing called prayer when we're communicating with God. The scripture is Matthew 6, verse 5 to 13, reading from the New King James Version. It says, Jesus speaking, he says, and when you pray... You shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners that they may be seen by men. Do you ever pray to impress anybody? I trust not. It says here, assuredly, I say to you, they have their rewards. But you, now this is the disciples of Jesus, this is the followers of of God, this is you and me. This is how we should pray. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they will be heard by their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. And so Jesus was addressing the culture of the day in terms of what prayer had developed into. And he was basically saying, it's wrong. Your model of prayer is wrong. Your culture of prayer is wrong. I want to teach you how to pray. And it says, therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows. You know what? I love that phrase. Your Father knows. When you pray, sir, ma'am, your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The enemy still wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And it is scriptural to regularly pray, Lord, deliver me from the evil one. He's out to try to destroy my life, to try to destroy my marriage, my family, relationships. He's out to destroy my business. But Lord, deliver me from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can I hear an amen from you? Amen. So we're talking about moments alone with God. Now, the verse that stands out for me uh, in the passage in Matthew 6 
is this particular one, and it says, but you, when you pray, it says, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, you never knew that God told you to shut your door, <laughs> pray to your Father who is in the secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, there are three phrases that stand out for me very clearly there, and they are the following three phrases. Go into your room, shut your door in secret. I would suggest to you that those are key phrases to see in the heart of what's been shared here by the Lord. What are the three, three phrases? Go into your room, shut your door in secret. Please say that with me. Go into your room, shut your door in secret. One more time. Go into your room, shut your door in secret. This is teaching us how to pray. Now, let me also just say that I know that I firmly believe that God wants us to live a lifestyle of prayer, and you can't be shut away in your room all the time. That's why the Bible says pray continually. It's talking about a lifestyle of prayer. We shared not so long ago about shooting up a prayer to God, as Nehemiah did. In the Afrikaans translation, it says, Ek het skiet gebed opgestuur na die God van die jimmel. Het jylle my allemaal verstaan, praise die Heere. Okay. So, <laughs> and so there is this thing of as we go in through our lives, something comes up and we pray about it. Something comes up, we pray. Something comes up and we pray. But I want to tell you, it's not just about prayer on the go. There are times where you have to do this. You have to go into your room, shut your door, be in secret. I want to tell you, it is undeniable that there is an importance, listen to this, about being alone with God. Can I ask you, in the last two weeks, have you had a moment alone with God? If so, well done. If not, please work on this. Please be encouraged to work on this. There is something undeniable about the importance of being alone with God. Thomas Akempis, you may have heard of him. He was a monk who lived in the 13 and 1400s. He wrote a book, one of the Christian classics, called The Imitation of Christ. In his book, The Imitation of Christ, uh, it is, by the way, one of the best known books on the aspect of Christian devotion. I think we can learn something from this man. And this is what he said. Please listen carefully. This is a beautiful statement that he said. He said, seek a convenient time to retire unto thyself and meditate often upon God's loving kindness. The greatest saints avoided the society of men when they could conveniently do so and did rather choose to live to God in secret. This is a man who understood devotion in the Christian life. And he said there has to be some times where you separate yourself from the crowd and you have a quiet moment with the Lord. And didn't Jesus do that? He would leave the crowd. He would leave even his closest ones and he would go and he would be alone with the Father. And I wanna tell you, you cannot just rely on the spontaneous prayers that you pray here and there during your day. There needs to be times in your life where you sit with the Lord. I had a, somebody at Bible college, he was one of our lecturers, and he said one of the things he so enjoys doing is having a cup of coffee, sitting outside on the patio with his Bible, and he has a cup of coffee with the Lord. What is he doing? He's just being quiet before the Lord. It's amazing what the Lord can do in our hearts in those times. So there is something very special and important about being alone with God about being quiet before the Lord. Have you experienced it? And so I wanna to say to you today, I would like to encourage you as your pastor, listen, listen carefully, I wanna encourage you to have times when you're just alone with God. That is not being selfish, it is being biblical. You might say, Lord, you don't understand God, I've got a four-year-old toddler that seems to have so much energy, 
born with Red Bull in his veins. How can I get alone with you, God? How can this be possible? <laughs> I think God understood what we would go through, and he also said, I will gently lead those that are with young. He's a gracious God. <laughs> but let me tell you this. I believe that that mom who is more, almost frayed at her ends kind of thing because of the four-year-old toddler who is a handful, I do want to say this, that I believe that that mom especially needs these times with the Lord because he restores your soul. Isn't it amazing how he does that? He restores your soul. And I want to also just say this, that you know that when you have these moments alone with the Lord, you are better off afterwards. You are, and me, less grumpy. I see some ladies nodding their heads about their husbands. <laughs> I tell you what, you are better when you've been with the Lord in His presence. You are in a better frame of mind. And so sometimes we've got to realize that when we feel like we're a little bit out of sorts in ourselves, you know what we have to do? We have to get alone with God and He restores my soul. That's what it says in Psalm 23, verse two and three. It says, He leads me beside the still waters, although I enjoy sparkling water. <laughs> Just kidding. Still water, he leads me beside the still water, and then it says, he restores my soul. You know what, sometimes when your wife or your husband is getting a little grumpy, you say to them, you go get into that room, and you shut the door, and you go spend some time with the Lord. Come on now, come on. You've been too grumpy lately. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I just have a chuckle. <laughs> so am, I, am I allowed to chuckle? And you know what? One more scripture, it says in Psalm 46, verse 10 to 11, it says, be still. Would you please say the word still? But God, this is such a busy world. But God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And then he says, the Lord of hosts is with you, the God of Jacob, listen to this, is our refuge. And I want to say to you that if we will have moments here and there where we will become still before the Lord, we will experience He is our refuge. In a cutthroat world with so much pressure, so much violence, so many problems, we become still before the Lord and we see He is our refuge. And so I want to say to you, child of God, that Abba Father is calling you to have these times. And I want to say, don't miss out on the joy of moments alone with God. Amen. Have you received the word this morning? Praise the Lord. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23 to 26, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me, and today we're doing this in remembrance of Jesus. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant. Folks, we're in a new covenant, a better covenant with better promises. This is the new covenant in my blood, the word says. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's lift up the bread. Lord, we know that the bread represents the body of Jesus. It re represents the body of the perfect spotless lamb of God. As we break this right now, we remind ourselves of what you went through in the lead up to the cross 
and on the cross, the tremendous suffering that you endured for the joy that was set before you. Thank you that what you went through demonstrates incredibly your love for us. And what we hold in our hand is a tangible sign that Jesus loves us. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can be partakers in the covenant, the body of the Lord, broken for you. Heavenly Father, now we lift up the cup. The grape juice in this cup symbolizes the blood of Jesus. And when Jesus said, I am the way, the way was made possible through his blood. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your precious blood. We also take a moment to say for things that we've said or done or thought lately that haven't been right, that have grieved you, we say we're sorry, Lord. We confess that to you, and we thank you for the cleansing of the blood of Jesus the blood of the Lord shed for you. Now may I encourage you to keep your eyes closed for a moment and if you just have a little secret moment with God in which you say, thank you Jesus for giving your life for me. Wow. Lord, as your people, we want it to be known that we are grateful. We are grateful to you. We're forever grateful for the cross. We're forever grateful for the price that you have paid. And now I declare over the people of God, because of what Jesus has done, you are in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. No longer are you in darkness but you are in his marvelous light. No longer are you defeated, but you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, now I just bless your people. I say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his smile upon you and give you peace. And all God's people say, amen. amen. 